Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. You can be anything in this life. Anything. You can be the president. You can be a judge. You can be anything you want to achieve in this life. But for you to achieve any of such, each achievement comes with its own rules. If you know you want to be a diva in the entertainment industry, you don't need to be too concerned with morality. <laughs> However, if you want to be a judge, you have to be concerned with morality. They are part of the rules of engagement. God has no special favored child. We're all product of equal opportunities in this life. Every one of us. No one is gifted above the other to make it above the other. There are rules to every goals. There are disciplines to every height and a price to pay for every achievement. When you get them right, you will get it. You will get it. So there is, and that's why the Bible says Mark 9, 23, anything is possible. If you can believe it. As it is in that natural realm, it's also with God. Abraham is our father, yes, but he's not our standard. So we can be greater than Abraham. Paul, a big brother, wrote to Tos of the New Testament, but I can tell him there are things greater than writing to Tos of the New Testament. It's only not yet been seen. And if I can pay the price, I will get it too. Only we cannot be greater than Jesus, for no man can be greater than his teacher or his master. But he said, if he's well trained, he can be exactly as his master. Who is our master? The limitless Jesus. So you can operate in the limitless sphere of the divine. If you can get it right. And this fair is open to anyone. And the demands are there. If you can apply them. You can be just like Jesus. Look like Jesus. Do more miracles than Jesus. He said the very works I do you should do. And even greater. There are attributes, like we said, God has no respect of person. He favors no one. So the reason why Abraham made it is not because God favored him. The same opportunity Abraham had, you have, and even better. Same opportunity Paul has, you have, and even better. He didn't help the woman with the issue of blood. <laughs> she chose to move. When others say she can't. And she got it. Romans 2.11 says, For with God there are no respect of persons. With all respect to people facing challenges, those who have died, young people, these things ought not to be. They ought not to be. And God is not going to be blamed for anything. Anything. He has done everything that needs to be done. 
Ephesians 6, 9 says he has no respect of persons. He favors no one more than another. Colossians 3, 25, 1 Peter 1, 17, for with God there are no respect of persons. The same opportunity Peter had is the same opportunity Judas had. Peter betrayed Jesus, but he didn't hang himself. Judas betrayed Jesus, he hung himself. The Lord didn't tell him to hang himself, he hung himself. He had heard the message, and he was there when Jesus preached, saying, and Peter asked, how often does my brother wrong me, and should I forgive him? And Judas heard Jesus say, 70 times, seven times, in a day. So he had the opportunity to go to the cross and say, Lord, I'm sorry. If the Lord now said, no, you cannot be forgiven, they will say, Lord, that's partiality. But he didn't. And because he didn't, he fell out. There were two thieves at the right and the left hand of Jesus. Jesus did not favor anyone before. The one said, if you claim to be the son of God that you claim to be, save yourself and save us. The other said, Ah, don't you fear God. We have been punished right. This man has done nothing wrong. Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And he made heaven. The Lord didn't say, you will make heaven, you will make heaven. No, 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 no. One made heaven based on his presentation. The other went to hell based on his own presentation. And that is how life is. In Romans 9, he says he has predestined all of us to be glorified. So those who end up not being glorified, it's a choice, either by ignorance or deliberately. Like the rule says, ignorance is not an excuse for the Lord. Say, for my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So either they knew or they did not know, it is still their choice not to be glorified in life. And end in the pit. Then it dawned on me. There are certain traits you must have in life. If you want to walk with God. If you want to overcome the challenges of our times. We're in bad and evil days. And it requires strong men to overcome it. These are not the days of the frivolous and the laid backs. These are the days of the strong. The person that took the second Bible reading practically gave, me, gave you the message that I was bringing. And there are certain traits, once you see them, you know this one will make it. And when you don't see it, you know this one will not make it. Let me tell you, you don't need to be a soothsayer. There are professors who will look at students and know this one will make it. This one will not make it. Not a curse. It doesn't, it's their lifestyle. They look at one. A brother, someone has a first class. They don't, it's not about just being brilliant. Yes, you can be brilliant, but there's a lifestyle you must adopt. That means that you don't go partying when you should be reading. Now, if he's partying while well, he should be reading, he doesn't come to class, he's going with God, you already know. You don't need prophecy. You already know he's going to fail. He cannot make it. And that's how it is with faith. There are traits you must see. If you don't see it, he cannot overcome. Don't waste your time. Don't invest in him. It's a waste. You don't invest in education in a man who will never go to class, who when he should be studying is going to party, jumping the fence, drinking and going about with gang. You don't pay such school fees. No, that's a drain. That's a waste of time because it's not going to pass. There's no magic to it. And that's how it is with faith. There are certain areas and certain people you don't invest in. It's a drain. They're not going to make it. Don't waste your time. And so there are traits that you must see, which I'll mention two, three, which you need to have to make it in these last days. That the days of the strong, when people take strong decisions, tough decisions. Amen. Amen. When you look at the campaign of the 
president of the United States. They knew who would give them problem. They knew who would give them problem. That doesn't mean you get the job done, but they knew who is conventional. They knew who is also not conventional. They saw it coming. Everything they are seeing, they saw it coming from the campaign. They saw it. This is his lifestyle. Then his daughter said, Dad, try to be more presidential. <laughs> so they saw all the disruptions to protocol coming. They saw it. They saw it. Praise God. Why would some mother say, this one will not marry my son? They look at her and see no virtue. They see beauty. They see curves. They see catwalk. But they know no marriage survives on catwalk, on beauty, and on curves. They know what marriage lives on. It lives on virtues. It lives on character. So when they see the girl with no virtue, they say, no, this is not a wife material. Except there's a miracle. This, 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 this marriage is heading nowhere. Except there's a miracle. There's nothing going to happen here. You can, you can see it. You can already tell. And I found this trait in all the Hebrews 11 generals of God. You can find it's consistent in all of them. You can't find any man. No, please, Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. Number one is tenacity. Any human being that is not tenacious is heading nowhere in these last days. He should just go and sleep. Luke 18. Luke 18. You all know the story? And he spoke this parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray, that what faint is not to give up, saying, There was in a city a judge which fear not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find this kind of people on the earth? So, he's not even looking for any kind of people. He's looking for tenacious people. This is to be used with God, not with Satan really, because he's using this widow's case as a bad case where it is absolutely impossible to get what you want. You are dealing with a man who has made it categorically clear to you, I hate your face, I can't stand your guts, and I don't intend to grant you your wish. Out of tenacity, Jesus said you got what you wanted. Now he said, is it not God who wants to give you what is yours that you are asking for, that will not give it to you, but look at how they ask him. They ask him how day and night. So it's not a one-day thing. That means probably they've asked God once, they are yet to get a response. They didn't go to sleep. They asked him, they said, they said day and night, day and night. Now you could imagine a judge saying, I don't fear God. Oh, Jesus May you not have nothing to do with a man who does not fear God. Then he says, I have no regard for man. Oh, Jesus. He has no respect and dignity for mankind. Amen? Amen. Then you have a dealing with him. In that dealing, he now says, I don't want to give you what you want. You are fighting three obstacles. He can't stand God. He's irritated by man. He doesn't want to give you your desire. Yet, the Bible says, by your continual coming, you wear him out and he releases what is yours to you. He said, 
shall not then God bear with his own elect who cry out to him how? Day and night. Now, if you cry to somebody day, meaning you didn't get it in day, then you are to cry at night. And it's possible you still didn't get it at night. Then you came back today. And you are telling God, you know what, God, I know you don't sleep, but none of us will rest. You won't rest, I won't rest. Heavens will not rest, earth will not rest until this thing is done. Jesus is saying, whether it's your portion or not, they will give it to you. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. Matthew 15, Matthew 15. The Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus. Say, Jesus, say, what is it? My daughter is grievously vexed. The Bible says the Lord did not answer her a word. Okay, I know you're not dumb. Today, if you had lost your voice, you will get it back today. Then she came and changed, maybe it's the tactics. The Bible says she bowed down and did what? Worshipped him, saying, and the disciples came and said, no, this one, send her away. She's disturbing us already. We can't sleep, oh, Lord. Fellowship is disrupted. I don't know what you're going to do. And the Lord said, the issue is, I cannot give the children's bread. No, that's not what he first said. Matthew 15. It's up. Say, Lord, help me. 26. He answered, I said, okay, it's not good to give the children's bread and cast it to dogs. You see one of the points of those who make it in this life, focus people. Focus people. They need to get that ring in your hand or that is what you say. Dogs don't say, say, dogs don't, we don't want dogs around here, but you want your own dog. Hey, make me your own dog. Today, I'll be your dog by your side. When I collect the research, I'll leave. Focus. Focus people don't get offended. Focus people don't get offended. They, and that's why this woman was offended. When they call a dog, say, leave dog. Look at the next answer. 27. You can see she's not ready to go back home without that answer. Have you noticed that? Yeah. She's not ready to go back. And the Lord knows that they came to rest. So if they need to rest, they need to answer this woman, right? Yet, Lord, the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. 28. Jesus answered and said to her, maybe you need to hear what the disciples said. He said, send her away. Please back up a bit to hear what the disciples protocol. You hear what protocol said. That's why they, may, may protocol not be your stumbling block in life in Jesus' name. Back up to, I think, 17, 18. Let me see in the discussion. 23. His disciples came besought him saying, send her away. She's crying we are. After, that means as we are moving, she's in the train at the back. Uh -huh. You know, there are certain people who don't even want people to associate with you. What's wrong with this man? Too? Just making noise here. Oh, ah, please, what is it? What the Lord said, he said, do you know what they told the Lord? They, they didn't tell the Lord, answer how. Look at what they said. Send her away. Protocol. Oh, the bishop, I'm sorry. Please, what do you need from the bishop? You need prayers. All right, I'll connect you to one pastor who will pray with you now. The bishop is sleeping and he cannot be disturbed. May thunder wake him up from sleep. When your faith is anchored to the bishop, it will not work with the pastor. That's where the faith is. When they told Jesus, come lay your hands. Until he laid hands, Jairus daughter didn't wear. Then the centurion said, speak. Then he spoke. One with your blood said, touch. Once they have expressed the contact with their faith, then the devil brings protocol to direct it to another thing. And he tells God, you know, she can't get it to. The statement she made is the bishop, and bishop is sleeping. And bishop must not be woken up. It's an itinerary. He's going to see the governor in the evening. 
<coughs> the governor, in the 11 o'clock, he has a political meeting for prayers about the nation. He says, send her away. You know what? She was following the Buddha and said, send her away. And you know, look at here what they said, 23. She cried. She wasn't following them quietly. She knows if she followed them quietly, they would ignore her. Simon! By Jonah! Tell your master I'm here. Jay, son of Ben. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What is this? Then they'll shout on her. Sorry. As they talk, she continues again. Now, the issue is we need to give her what she wants so we can have peace. They are the owners of the earth. They are the last days generals. They are the ones that will have their way with God. <laughs> In that Luke 5, from verse 14, 15 or so, the Bible says Jesus was preaching. The house was full. The door was packed. Then you have a friend paralytic and you can't wait for the meeting to end and then Jesus, everybody will come out through the entrance. Then you are called Jesus. Then you went to remove somebody's roof. They are the owners of the last days. I was with someone and she had a child but nine years was not, she didn't take him for the second child she was yet to take him her grandmother had one child her, gram, her great grandmother had one her grandmother her grandmother had one her mother and she was the only child of her mother and she had only one and was yet to take him said she was praying and she said the Holy Ghost said she should come and see me but when she came to see me I said oh you're only taking I said that's not a problem we prayed and she took him. Then she met me later and said she had a miscarriage. I said, oh. I said, okay. I'll pray with you again. As soon as you take it, let me know so as to prevent to make sure it doesn't happen. So we prayed again. And then later on, she took it again. Then she came to see me. And I was very busy. So I said to her, I said, you know what, madam? Today is not a good day. <laughs> Today is not a good day. Sometimes the bishop can be the hindrance himself, like Eli. Now, Eli was the custodian who God would use to channel the blessing and was the blocker. He was the blocker. But you know, Anna, when someone comes to that state, heaven must attend to them. I said, today is not a good day. What will happen is this. Let's see next tomorrow or next week. <laughs> she just laughed. Those were the days when those old zero knife zero uh, cell phone. She just called her husband. She's you know she's evil. She spoke evil. She said, "Hey, get it, get it, get it, get it, oh. I'm speaking in sleeping in Pastor K's house tonight. I'm not leaving today. We are going home together, and I'll be in his house until he answers me." I said, "Eh, what did you just say? It's me who <laughs> don't put into trouble." He said, "No problem." They came to meet her that your boss is back in the office. He sent for you. Tell him I'm not coming. I said, you want to put me in trouble? He said, we'll enter trouble together. I said, God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus, I'm in an emergency situation. I need help. At one time before that happened, I said, this, I'm not tuned. I'm offline. The wife is not connecting to heaven. So, I bought a bottle of Coke and I bought Chin Chin. I put my leg on the table and I was eating. She just sat in front. That's offensive. She sat in front. She, that's why she called the husband. I'm where I'm sleeping tonight. Oh. If you call me, they say I'm not at home. If you're looking for me, come to Pastor Kesa's house. Well, I'm there. Say, Pastor Kesa, today, on that, you think I'm sleeping in It's on your bed. We are sleeping together. And I thought she was joking. <laughs> I put my leg on the table. I was eating Chin Chin with Coke. So like oil dropped from heaven. Cow! When it hit my head, it was hot. I dropped the chin-chin like this on the floor. I said, yeah! She said, what is that? I said, hot oil. It traveled through my brain, came into my spirit, and began to spread. Then the next thing I said, I will contend with them that contend with you. I will fight them that fight you. 
I will keep this baby. I will, and I began to confess that Isaiah, and I began to prophesy, you will deliver this baby according to my word. See a God, oh my, she collapsed on the floor, bow, and she gave birth to that baby. What if? Anyway, I tire. It's not for these last days. They can't even make it. Don't even invest in them. They can't go far. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.